So I got a few wheels here that are going to go on to my 68 Colony Park. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put stock wheels back on with hubcaps. These are cool and they look good. Um, but you know, it, it rubs over here and I don't really want to uh, bend the fender lip or anything. And I don't know, right? It just lately I'm, I'm interested in the stock look with uh, regular wheels, steel wheels with hubcaps, park lane hubcaps. And so I dug these out and they are some old, <laughs> Old, old tires. I mean, they are you know, Firestone Deluxe Champion. Um, let's see, what's the, what's the other one? There was an, old, an even older looking one. Oh, there it is. Ram Custom 78. I have no idea how old these tires are. They are certainly, I mean, they could be from the 70s or, or 80s probably the 80s um but <clears throat> but this one here this one see i well i took that one off over there but uh back to this one um i think uh, i don't know if i bought this new um but i was looking at the date on it earlier and you can see i mean this tire has never never been used and i guess it i guess it was a spare tire for my 68 monterey as you can see there but yeah it's a rusty wheel and oh there's the date if you can see 1701 that's the 17th week of 2001 so this tire is old enough to drink which means it's almost, or, or it's more than double uh, what a tire should be to get on the highway. A 10-year-old tire, that's my limit, 10 years old. I don't need to have a tire start coming apart as it's uh, subjected to, to heat. Um, uh, yeah, I, I've seen that enough times. I've seen cars, you know, classic cars get wrecked because... Yeah, the tire's got good tread because it never gets used, but the problem is the passage of time just degrades the tire, and especially when they sit in the sun. I imagine dry southwest might be even worse on tires than, than up here. Uh, but yeah, 10 years is my limit, and check your dates. Check your tire dates. You know, make sure... You know, if, if, if you got anything that's um, 2012, you know, any, you know, any, any of the first two digits with an 11 or, you know, I don't know what week we're in here, but, but either way, you know, a 10 year old tire, any, just about anything that says 2012 um, or one, two as the last two digits is is aged out and it just should not be used it's um it's basically an accident waiting to happen so anyway yeah brand new tire what do you do you throw it away you know what can you do so just keep good tires on it if you care about the car but anyway what what we're going to do is <laughs> as you can see i have some tire removal tools and hammers and what a pain it is trying to get a wheel off the car or the, uh, the tire off the rim and tire machines make it look easy people on youtube make it look easy but i don't know the tricks to it so i'm just going to wait until tomorrow to have the other four tires dismounted but i've got a nice machine here and this this was actually the rustiest rim out of all those four over there and and it um it, i put it in the shot blast machine you know you just it, this is the shot blast machine and uh you put the wheel in there let's open it up here but 
I put the wheel in this cage because uh, you, you normally you put small parts in there and um, and they'll tumble around as there's shot this little the steel shot right here you can you can just make it out it's it's very very tiny steel balls and so that gets thrown up by a paddle in the bottom um, of the machine and it just gets flung up at high speed and it, it impacts the wheel and it cleans off all the rust, it cleans off old paint. Uh, it works phenomenal with all the projects I have to do and uh, well all these scattered rusty projects um, I need a machine like this. So I think what I'm going to try to do is take the whole uh, barrel out of there, that whole cage, and see if the wheels will fit on the two rollers. Because if you look, if I if I press the uh, uh, rot rotate or rotisserie or whatever it is, R O the R O T button, uh, it'll it'll turn. So yeah, I guess it's rotisserie. But <clears throat> so these two rollers. Um, the wheels just might fit on there and and even though I, I, I probably only spent 20 minutes that probably spent about 20 minutes in the machine in the cage it might go quicker uh, if I take the cage out however I'm not quite strong enough to lift that cage by myself and the access over here with the forklift is just well, I don't have it, so um, that's kind of too bad. Um, you know, I got a little forklift that'll fit over here, but it's not really running that well. It needs uh, it needs some cylinder repair. But anyway, um, so yeah, you you can see how good this wheel came out, and that, and that was just 20 minutes. I mean, it's it could probably stand to be in there a little longer. If you look in, in some of the some of the areas that they weren't hit quite as much. Um, if I get the flashlight here, uh, it's hard to hard to get a good angle. But you can see a little bit of brown from the rust. So leaving this wheel in there, you know, maybe another 10 minutes or so would, would clean that up more thoroughly. And then they'll be ready for prime and paint and, and have new tires put on. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to getting that getting that station wagon running. Um, more consistently uh, the EFI that I worked on before it's still finicky and acting up it, 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 it still wants to surge up and down it can't seem to find an air fuel ratio that's gonna make it run smooth and um, I don't know I think I'm gonna it's the atomic one EFI and I'm going to um, and I'm going to put the Atomic 2 on there. I've got it sitting in the box. And so that'll be another project uh, for another time. But anyway, uh, yeah, got to say I love this machine. Anything that uh, makes the job go quicker, easier, a little more automation. Uh, you know, unlike using the sandblast cabinet. You know, that's like coloring in a, a sheet of paper with a pencil. You know, this thing, you you hit the button and, and uh, walk away. And it, it does its thing, and the, the stuff comes out ready ready to be cleaned off with uh, some, some lacquer thinner or brake clean or whatever, and uh, ready for paint. So, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll do some more work on those wheels here in, in, uh, in the next couple days and, and uh, put a video together. All right. Well, thanks. Talk to you later. Whew. Wow. That's, <laughs> the sun is bright. You know, I can't... I, I got to hold the camera when the sun behind it, but boy, is it bright. Well, today I went and picked up my Bronco. Uh, actually, it's my wife's Bronco. Uh, we bought it together back in maybe 2000 or so, 22 years ago. Anyway, you know, it, uh, it used to look really good around that time. And, and uh, 
or actually around 05. And then moving up here, it got set aside because we didn't really drive it in winter. I think we might have drove it one time and that's about all it took to do it in and then it was sitting and and uh you know the whole the whole story about kids coming and, and all that stuff but can't i can't seem to part with it and uh so it sat over at a friend's shop for um about a year and a half maybe two years gosh could be could be two years anyway and it's just deteriorating as it sits so i decided to go pick it up and and hopefully uh hopefully we'll be doing something with it here sometime soon but boy did it get shabby in some areas oh my god tremendous yuck yeah i don't know what the heck but oh well and yeah so i was at my friend's shop and he was the one that that popped the uh tires off of these uh wheels for the station wagon and so i got those back and and you know so we're gonna go put them in the in the shop blast machine and and get them cleaned up and and ready for paint Well, this one's a little, a little sticky. I don't know what it, what it is, but I think that ought to go in the washing machine before it goes in the shop blaster. So we have the controls over here. And uh, so we can turn on the, uh, well, I don't want to turn on the fan yet, but I'll turn on the, the rotisserie. gonna do two at a time because uh, they got to be flipped around and they tend to walk from the right all the way over over to the left which is good because then it changes the angle at, at uh, of how the shot hits it so it, it seems to get more uh, coverage that way got an overhead exhaust fan that this is plumbed into so any of the dust just goes outside. Well, we have to turn on the, on the fan and that helps push it up and out into the uh, central exhaust system. Alright we're going to set it for 10 minutes. 
is uh, Fomico right there, so they're original stuff. My tires came in a couple days ago, so now my friend, he's, he's got the shop. He's waiting on, uh, waiting on me to bring the wheels. Yeah, I just noticed one of those wheels is more narrow. where the spare tire will uh, will go to. Okay, we got the last two in there. So we'll clean them up and I was gonna try to prime them and paint them tonight, but I'll uh, I'll wait to do that tomorrow. So yeah we'll run these and that'll be it and they'll be ready. I was going to paint them tonight, but it's getting kind of late. And, uh, but tomorrow, I'll be doing that tomorrow evening. See you then. Well, so here we are. I uh, got the wheels hanging up here. Um, got one more wheel to, uh, well, <clears throat> down in here. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera. But some of the little steel shot, let's see if I can put a flashlight on it and make it show up. And yeah, so some of the little steel shot uh, gets lodged in some of these crevices and I just gotta use a use a pick to, to get it out. Um, so that's it's what I've been doing with these these other wheels. One, two, three of the six and a half, and then one of the six inch wide. And of course this one on the floor is a six and a half. So at least I have a matching set of four six and a half inch wheels. Um, but I'm gonna prime them, paint them all. They all came out of the um, shot blast machine. And uh, uh, they're, they're ready for primer. I got epoxy primer 
the uh, Nason full epoxy. I like I like Nason stuff. I you know it's it's been working good for me. I'm not a professional body guy, but um, it's relatively affordable and I think it does a pretty good job. Um, but that's what I'm going to use. That's what I got. So, all right, let's uh, do a little bit of scraping on the, uh, the wheel here. If I can set up the camera here. Doing a, I got brake clean in here in this Zep Model B sprayer. So I'm just gonna give these a hose down. Uh, last time I uh, cleaned stuff with brake clean, there was a little bit of like brown dust and stuff that would come off. That came off pretty clear, so um, luckily it won't take much cleaning. I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible. it with a rag after you put some solvent on it. But this is a transmission shop paint job. It's going to be tough uh, getting some of the angles sprayed on them, but I think uh, I'll be able to reach, reach in there. Like these are really close together. You know? I'll try to move that end one over and, uh, and then move this one, second one, or third, whatever. One, two, three, four. So the third one needs to move over as well. If I were a real auto body guy, I'd have a paint can opener, not a screwdriver. It's a little thin on top, even though it was in the shaker for a while. Okay, so this uh, Nason 49112 calls for a 2 to 1 ratio between the, uh, the primer and the activator. So we're going to mix up quite a bit of this. Alright, so here's the ounces. So if we want to split it in thirds, we'll go for 24 ounces. We'll bring the paint up to... Uh, 16 ounces and then go up to 24 with the activator. That makes sense to me. All 
right, so now we're at 24. 16 ounces of paint or primer and 8 ounces of activator. And it doesn't say that there's an induction period on this. So I think it's pretty much ready to spray. Well, at least that's what I gathered from the technical data sheet. But probably be get best to verify that reading the can here. No induction. Bend that so it holds the gun a little bit. There we go. That's better. Cap on and
Ugh. Need a hairbrush. Anyway. Well, anyway, the wheels have been primed and they've been painted. They're still uh, pretty glossy because it's still wet, but it'll it'll dull out here as uh, as it dries. This is uh, Sem Trim Black, and um, it's it's got just the right amount of sheen for uh, wheels and other other things like that. Um, so. It, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. There's runs and some sags and stuff, but from Ford it didn't come out perfect anyway. And um, they're gonna have hubcaps on them, uh, so it'll probably get it'll get scratched around, you know, around this area here once the the hubcap goes on, and uh, it might get scratched when the tires are going on and. But, you know, that's just kind of kind of the way it is. And, and that's one of the benefits to using SEM trim black paint is because it, it also is available in uh, in an aerosol. Uh, oh, that's the primer. Uh, yeah, so even though I got it in a quart and, and sprayed, the same paint is available in uh, an aerosol. So this way, if you get everything mounted and put on and and it had some scratches that were visible, even with the hubcap in place. Um, you know, you tape it off a little bit and touch it up with the aerosol, and uh, and it should blend right in because it's the same paint. So anyway, well, it's uh, probably close to midnight, and uh, I should go home and get some sleep. So anyway, uh, that was that was. That was uh, too close. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. Hairbrush and uh, probably sunglasses too. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> well, they, uh, that might be partially due to the paint fumes. But uh, anyway, great. Thanks uh, for joining me on this uh, quest of getting the wheels painted by cleaning off the rust, having the tires removed, putting them in the shop last cabinet, getting them cleaned up, hanging them up, um, cleaning them off, priming and painting, and now they're drying. So tomorrow we'll probably bring them out in the sun and uh, let them, you know, warm up and really, you know, let the paint, paint cure uh, pretty well. So have a great night. And I will be seeing you soon. Alright, so I got the wheels back. Got the tires mounted. And luckily the studs fit, because these are 916 studs in here. Which, um, I needed longer studs where the threads would protrude through the nut. Um, and... They didn't do that with these wheels. I like these wheels, I really like these wheels, but I don't know, I'm kind of feeling more stock hubcap lately. Uh, especially because they, they require, in the front, they required spacers, and uh, which wasn't a big deal, but that's part of the reason for the longer studs. And so to get a, a long enough stud, I had to upgrade to a 916, which, you know, it's it's not a problem because these stock wheels fit with that as well. So, um, going to put my hubcaps on and take it for a ride, I guess. But yeah, these wheels look so, these tires look so small compared to the other ones. <laughs> these were the, let me get it here. These were the ones that were on there, if you can see the difference between them. I mean, that's, that's, that's a 275.60, and this is a, I forget, I think 225, 225.75. So, yeah, they're small, but they're, eh, they're probably not too small. Um, it just might spin a tire a little easier now. 
Uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of a cool look without the hubcaps, but station wagon? I'm going to put the hubcaps. All right. Well, here's the hubcap. That's a uh, 68 Park Lane hubcap, which is, I would say, it's appropriate for a 428 Colony Park as well. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm liking the other wheels better or not, but this is what's on here for now. And uh, just got to get that blue stuff cleaned off and and. Uh, uh, well, see how it looks. Maybe it'll look better when it's on the ground and the wheels are tucked up a little bit. Well, we'll see. I think these are the longest valve stems that uh, Milton makes. They're, uh, I think they're two and a half. Two and a quarters won't work. They, you, you can't put air in the tire with the hubcap on. pretty heavy and uh, especially hooking up a trailer to the back we want to you know we don't want to have the tire too soft for that So bad. It looks pretty good, I think. If the red were brightened up in those hubcaps, it might look a little better. But it's okay. Take for a ride, see how it goes. Getting a little hot. It's up to about 2.15 sitting in idling. Let's see what the atomic EFI says. Yeah, 2.16. Well, I guess that's accurate. I gotta say I'm pretty happy with the tires. I, I do like the way it looks. 
um, especially it'd be nice when the car gets painted back to original with the wood grain on the sides uh, that's somewhere down the list though um, the Firestone tires I really like they um, have you know they're I wouldn't say they're really a muscle car tire but they on a 60s 70s cruiser like uh, like this they they have a really nice look and they have a really nice ride too and they're available new which is good um, the I, I really like the I'm not a big fan of like full solid raised white letters but I I do like these outlined letters I think they they look uh, just really good they're subtle they're not um, they give it a hint of performance without really being uh, flashy um, so to me uh, no, normally I have the black walls out but I, I like these I like these letters I think Firestone did a pretty good job they they look you know the 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 writing is um, pretty nostalgic and uh, it, it just looks appropriate for uh, this era car so if you uh, you know if you got something from 60s 70s that cruises like a land yacht like this uh, these uh, Firestone destinations are, are, are probably a pretty good choice or something something worth looking at anyway um, but anyway that uh, pretty much concludes the um, swapping over the wheels and putting on new tires and uh, I'll be cruising this car to Carlisle here in a couple weeks so if you go to the Carlisle All Ford show which is always the first weekend in June in Carlisle Pennsylvania um, the car should be sitting there with the rest of the full-size Fords and Mercs so anyway uh, that about does it and we'll see you next time